And these calls always are the best and have the most benefit when other people share, right? And, and now that there are a few new people here too, um, it's awesome to get other people to talk because a lot of people are hesitant to talk on video, especially when they join the community because it's kind of intimidating. But as all of you know, who join this call, that this is the least formal thing that you will do all day. So uh, it is not intimidating in any way whatsoever because there's nothing to love that we have here on this call. So um, I was thinking uh, yesterday, actually, is when I kind of came up with this. I did have some other stuff planned because I try to do notes and come up with like a format. Um, but yesterday I decided to change it because, you know, we can do that uh, and just talk about gratitude because it's so important. And I think sometimes it's lacking, you know, every, every morning I have, um, what's up, Charlie? Good to see you, brother. Um, so every morning I have, I have a health and fitness coach, uh, Gerard, um, who's actually my referrer in the SFM. But anyway, I have to text him every morning, um, you know, three things. It's, you know, what are you, what are you grateful for today? Um, what are you going to do today to get closer to your goals and whatever? Did I stick to my meal plan the day before, which that's not relevant to this, but the gratitude thing is kind of what got me thinking, you know? So today, um, I usually come up with, uh, I try to think of things that I'm grateful for that aren't, you know, I, I'm healthy, right? Which I am grateful that I'm healthy, but I try to come up with some just other things that I might not think of just to kind of spark my mind in the morning of, of things that I'm grateful for. Um, you know, every other Thursday, I'm super grateful uh, that we get to hang out, right? And that, that we have our call. That's always what I type in there because uh, it just, it makes me happy, you know, to, to get to see everybody. And today is also my favorite football team plays tonight, the Chicago Bears, right? So that sounds very juvenile for some people. I get that. But for me, it's like a thing. Like I have a huge amount of gratitude for that. You know what I mean? Like I get on game day, which is usually the weekend. So it's like a, it's a surprise to have it on a Thursday. So I've, you know, I have the Chicago Bears shirt, the shorts, the underwear. Like when I go out of the house later, the mask, right? Like I'm, it's game day, baby. You know what I mean? And I will be in a fantastic mood all day. Even if my team loses tonight, which they probably will, I will still be in a great mood, okay? Because I'm just grateful um, that we have that. You know, it's like, it can be easy to take things for granted, okay? Like take people for granted, for example. Uh, you know, we can get used to things. Uh, we can get used to people showing up for us and, you know, kind of come to expect it, right? Like, um, I try not to take for granted just, for example, and everybody, everybody's time is valuable and everybody uh, gives of their time to come and hang out on this call, you know, um, and Shabir always shows up. Like I, I text him a message about this, you know, so it's the middle of the night over there. Okay. And I, I don't want to take for granted that he's going to show up because he just does, right. It doesn't matter what time it is. Like the dude gets no sleep. I don't know how he's breathing and, but he always shows up. Okay. And like, I don't want to overlook the fact that that's hard. Like, it's hard to get no sleep. It's hard to always wake up and show up. But when people have a tendency to show up for us in life, we, we can kind of take it for granted, you know? And I believe that whenever we focus on, on gratitude, um, it, may, it, it makes us not take people for granted. It makes us not take things for granted. And it makes us not take situations for granted, you know? And that's why it's important to express gratitude right like to express it you know I have, this, I have this sign at my my lake house and it says feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it okay like gratitude is an action word right like we show gratitude and i'm extremely grateful for you know all of you who consistently show up for our call you know and uh for curls whom without none of this would happen you know like i joke around a lot but that's real shit. Like, like we would all be in like online purgatory if I was responsible for making sure that everybody made it to this call, right? Like we know this. <laughs> so I don't want to take for granted that this just happens. You know what I mean? Because nothing just happens, right? Like people have to put effort in and energy in and their time for things to happen. So, you know, if we just take a minute and 
feel that gratitude and then express that gratitude, you know, and just show people that, uh, that we appreciate them. Right. Cause sometimes that makes a huge difference. Okay. Um, like tonight, I'm super, super grateful that the Bears play, like I talked about. Right. And I'm just grateful that we actually have a football season, you know, because like the world is, is shut down a lot. And I really look forward to it. Like every year, it's like a thing for me. Okay. College football, my Florida Gators and the Bears. And like, I just love it, you know, and, and I believe that it's, that it's good for us. Okay. Like whether you like sports or not, I believe that sports bring people together, you know, like music brings people together, you know, and art brings some people together. Right. And I'm all about things that bring people together. Okay. Like we have a community with a common purpose, right? Like we're all from different places. Okay. And we have many different goals and we're here for different reasons. But if you spend any amount of time with the people here, you'll see a common thread. Okay. And, and it's that everybody here wants to have a positive impact on the world in some way, you know, and, and I'm grateful to be a part of that. And so today um, I've rounded up like some short stories, like some, you know, not really quotes, but like some short stories that they make me smile, right. That are about gratitude and kindness. And uh, what I'd like to do is I wanted to get some of you guys to help me read them. And by help me, I mean, you know, you do all the work and read them. And, um, you know, then if you have any stories of your own about examples of kindness or gratitude to share them, right? Because uh, I think we all get more out of these calls when we all share our experiences uh, than me just talking about some stuff for a while, right? So uh, in November, and I actually just learned this, do you know, November is National Gratitude Month in America. I did not know that. I didn't know we had a National Gratitude Month. It should not surprise me because we have a month for basically everything, but I'm really excited about November. So in November, we'll have a couple calls where um, we'll go over some actionable items about living in gratitude and having an attitude of gratitude. But today, I just wanted to go over, have you guys read some cool stories. Most of you uh, have a much cooler accent than me anyway and sound way cooler when you read stuff. So I'm going to share my screen and find uh, find something here. Let's see who I'm going to read first. All right. Susan, you want to read the first one for me that I pull up here? And then you mean yeah there's another susan there <laughs> oh that's susanna oh susanna okay mm -hmm. can you can you guys see my screen is it my whole screen or is it just the document whole screen of course you can see see where we would be if this was up to me what about that is that any better yeah Not look at that all right Ooh. There we go. All right. Okay. Susan, you're on this one, sweetheart. <laughs> okay. When I was about eight or nine, my mom burnt some toast. One night that stood out in my mind is that when she made dinner for us after a very long and rough day at work, she placed a plate of jam and extremely burnt toast in front of my dad. Not slightly burnt, but completely black toast. I was just waiting to see if anybody noticed the burnt toast and would say anything. But dad just ate his toast and asked me if I'd done my homework and how my day was. I don't remember what I told him that night, but I do remember hearing my mom apologizing to dad for burning the toast. And I'll never forget what he said. Sweetie, I love burnt toast. <laughs> Later that night, I went to tell my dad good night and asked him if he really liked his toast burnt. He put his arm on my shoulder and said, your mama put a very long day at work today and she was very tired. And besides, burnt toast does never hurt anyone. But you know what does? Harsh words. Then he continued to say, you know, life is full of imperfect things and imperfect people. I'm not the best at hardly anything, and I forget birthdays and anniversaries just like every other human. 
what I've learned over the years is that learning to accept each other's faults and choosing to celebrate each other's differences is one of the most important keys for creating a healthy, growing and lasting relationship. Life is too short to wake up with regrets. Love the people who treat you right and have compassion for the ones who don't. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. Doesn't that sound so much cooler than when I talk? <laughs> so jealous. All right. What do we got here? I love some of these. All right. Kuhn, would you mind reading this one for us, please? Did I say it right? Closer to right? Close to right. Good Ish. enough. Ish. <laughs> You should it. have Susan let the. Uh, you should have let Susan read this one. Her name is in. <laughs> well, we're gonna mix it up, brother. You haven't you haven't spoken on the call before, man. So uh, we, sure. like, we like we like all these stuff here. One day, Susan went to the ATM at her bank to withdraw some cash. When she spent her, when she put her card in the machine, she realized that someone had left a large amount of cash in the machine. It was five hundred dollars. She immediately took the money inside, and handed it to the manager. The manager then asked her, ma'am, what do you expect me to do with it? She told him to find out who it was at the, at, at the ATM before her so he could return uh, so he could return it to that person's account. She then left the bank, satisfied that she had done all that she could. The next day, she received a phone call from a bank manager. He had found the owner of the money and he had a surprise for her. It was a 92-year-old addict who had taken out the money to pay her rent. But after she took her receipt, she forgot to take out the cash of the ATM. Her rent came to $480. And so as a thank you, she wanted to give her the rest. It turned out, though, that $20 was all she had for the rest of the month to live on. Listening to the conversation, Susan refused to take the money that the lady had offered her. Susan couldn't stop thinking about Edith and her vulnerability though. She thought to herself how poor she must be, but not how generous at the same time. Finally, she decided to call the bank manager back. She told him that to transfer $200 from her account to Edith's account. Another bank employee overheard her request and decided to chip in another hundred dollars. A little while later, she received another phone call from the bank. The staff of the bank had pulled together and came up with another three hundred dollars for Edith. Susan couldn't believe what she had transpired. How wonderful. She was feeling so happy. Her one act of honesty inspired the incredible act of generosity for one little old lady, and that generosity snowballed into more and more generous donations in return. It doesn't matter how much we have to give, however big or small, true generosity always returns positively in our lives. Give with your whole self, love with your whole heart, and, with, and your life will be full of happiness. Awesome. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that one. Thank you. Oh, and all of these are true stories too. Like I didn't make any of this up, Wow. but I, I did copy them. I mean, let's be serious. I didn't write these. Um, all right, Gary, would you mind reading the next one, my man? Is it possible to make it larger on the screen? Cause I can hardly read, but it's sitting there. Oh, that, that works. That works. Oh, Thank you. I don't mean to brag or anything, but I'm a technological wizard. Look at that. Look, I think you might be muted, Gary. Uh, this is a little bit awkward, but I've waited a long time to pass this on to you. My wife and I came in for a haircut shortly before Christmas this last year. My wife was suffering from dementia and you treated her as if you'd been working with dementia patients all of your life. You let us sit next to each other. And when it came time for her uh, haircut, for her cut, you turned her chair towards me so I could watch her expressions as you cut her hair. 
It turned out even better than I thought it would. Sadly, she died in March, and that haircut was one of the last best moments of her life. She felt so pretty. She visited the mirror in the bathroom several times during the day and would come out beaming. To see her so happy was priceless. Looking back, it was likely one of dozens of haircuts you gave that day, but one which revitalized a woman's sense of self and her singular beauty. I hope you always realize the power of your profession. It's so easy to take things like that for granted. Sincerely, a grateful customer. Awesome. Thanks, Gary. I love this one. You know, there's a, um, a statistic I heard here. It's, been, it's a few years ago, but I'm sure it's probably about the same. And it was for every 12 people who complain uh, to a business or to a person, they get one compliment right? That's like on track and surveys and people calling in and everything. So I find it important to just take a minute, right? Like this person, it probably took him five minutes to write this letter, but I'm sure that it had a great impact on the person that received it, right? So, you know, whenever we go places, um, if we're allowed to go places out and about, when we talk to somebody on the phone, whatever it is, you know, just, just give them some love, you know, like, like tell them that they did a good job or that you appreciate it or um, whatever that is, because it's, it takes no time to do, you know, especially managers. Most of the time, all they hear is complaints, you know, oh, so you, it's good to pass it on. You know, Danny, if I could just kind of chime in on that. Oh, pl pl please do, man. This yeah. is our call. Anybody talks at yeah. any time. Um, you know, one of the things that I've always done in business is when somebody has served me well particularly on the phone and particularly since I live in the United Kingdom and that's a rare event to begin with I always ask if I could speak to their manager to compliment the manager on the fact that they have a great employee here they don't know what to do half the time they they gasp for air uh, they can't find somebody fast enough um uh, when I do get a supervisor on the phone, I can hear the guy is already gearing up for a fight. And when I start to compliment the employee, and uh, they, they, you can almost hear the gears in their minds coming to a screeching halt. The arguments that they have been preparing are no longer there. And half of them say, can you say that again, please? You know, are, are, um, do I get this? And you're talking about so and so, yes. You know, and um, they they it, it it's almost a shock to them. And I said, now if you guys had an email address, I'd be happy to put my words in writing. Well, usually they don't. They don't even have it in their system how you could give a compliment. But the fact that I gave it to them, I said, now will you write this down and put it in her file for me? and or hurt his file and i said and be sure you label it this is an eagle get rid of the rest of your turkeys you know <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and so i just wanted to throw that out because really um those people who serve us well deserve to be complimented and not only themselves but the people who supervise over them because all they'll ever really hear is the complaints and that's, that's right. all I have to say about that. Hey, brother. I, no, I, I appreciate you sharing that. That is, that is so true. You know, it's it's my, uh, it's my opinion. You know that that people don't do business with companies. People do business with people, right? Um, and when I was in the corporate sales world, it was we all had the same widgets. We all did the same shit, right? But it's it's what what do you do to to understand that person and to and to help that person and, and to make that person you know feel better or make their life easier, and you know whenever we uh, compliment people for one it makes them continue that I believe but what, like you talk about when you, whenever you compliment their manager, um, it, it it should uh, a make them feel good but it should also let them know that. Like th this is the standard, like this is why people want to do business with us, you know, and, and, and those people should be rewarded. So I, I totally agree with that, man. I, I appreciate you sharing. Thank you very much. All right, let me see here. Who are we going to pick?
RT, is that how I say your name? Yes, it's RT. That was like on the money right there. I mean, I'm just saying that was that was pretty exact. Would you mind reading this next one for us, please? Okay. Thank lady, you. Okay, yeah. A lady worked as a janitor in a company for many years. Now being a janitor is a pretty thankless job, which many of us might consider as a dirty job, or at least pretty far down the totem pole. In other words, probably not a whole lot of fun. It happened the company changed owners. Within a few days, the new owner wrote a personal thank you card to every employee in the company. He had his assistant go around and hand them out. When this lady received and opened her card, she burst into tears. She asked if she could be excused from work. Thinking she was sick, she was allowed to leave for the rest of the day. What really happened? What the story was, they found out a few days later. She had never received even a verbal thank you from the previous owners and management, much less a personal card. And she had worked there for 20 to 30 years. So she was really touched when the new owner sent her a card of appreciation. And she had been thinking the change of ownership was probably a good time to quit. And she was planning to let them know that as per, that very day, which she didn't, because the little time, the little extra effort of the owner she sent to send a little thank you card made the lady feel appreciated. Awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate you reading that one. Thank you. Right, that's kind of the, uh, you know, we talk about at the end of the calls a lot. You reach out to somebody and tell them that you appreciate them, right? Sometimes it goes a very long way because a lot of people don't hear that very often. All right. Ishtafan. Yeah? Yeah. Hi. Hello, everyone. Oh, yeah. My man. Would you mind reading this, reading this one for me? No problem. No problem. Uh, for us? My, yeah. My last tie. Can you scroll down to them? Yeah, brother, I got it. I just want to show the cool duck tie. I'll bet Casper yeah. had a tie like that if he wore ties. <laughs> it looks nice. <laughs> so soon I will be gone forever, but that's okay as long as someone reads this. I am only 24 years old, yet I have actually already chosen my last tie. It's the one that I will wear on my funeral above a few months from now on. It may not match my suit, but I think it's perfect for the occasion. The cancer diagnosis came too late to give me at least a tenuous hope for a long life, but I realized that the most important thing about that is to ensure that you leave this world a little better than it was before you existed with your contributions. The way I've lived my life so far, my existence, or more precisely the loss of it, will not matter because I have lived without doing anything impactful. Before, there were so many things that occupied my mind. When I learned how much time I had left, however, it became clear which things are really important. So I'm writing to you for a selfish reason. I want to give meaning to my life by sharing with you what I have realized. <clears throat> don't waste your time on work that you don't enjoy. It is obvious that you cannot succeed with something that you don't like. Patience, passion, and dedication come easily only when you love what you do. It's stupid to be afraid of others' opinions. Fear weakens and paralyzes you. If you let it, it can grow worse and worse every day until there is nothing left of you but a shell of yourself. Listen to your inner voice and go with it. Some people may call you crazy, but some may even think you're a legend. Take control of your life. Take full responsibility for the things that happen to you. Limit bad habits and try to lead a healthier life. Find a sport that makes you happy. Most of all, don't procrastinate. Let your life be shaped by decisions you made, not by the ones you didn't. Appreciate the people around you. Your friends and relatives will always be an infinite source of strength and love. That is why you should 
that is why you shouldn't take them for granted. It is difficult for me to fully express my feelings about the importance of the simple realizations, but I hope that you will listen to someone who has experienced how valuable time is. <clears throat> I'm not upset because I understand that the last days of my life have become, have become meaningful. I only regret that I will not be able to see a lot of cool stuff that should happen soon, like the creation of AI or Elon Musk's next, next awesome project. I also hope that the war in Syria and the Ukraine will end soon. We care so much about the health and integrity of, your, of our body that until death, we don't notice that the body is nothing more than a box, a parcel for delivering our personality, thoughts, beliefs, and intentions to this world. If there is nothing in this box that can change the world, then it doesn't matter if it disappears. I believe that we all have potential, but it also takes a lot of courage to realize it. You can float through a life created by circumstances, missing day after day, hour after hour. Or you can fight for what you believe in <clears throat> and write the great story of your life. I hope you will make the right choice. Leave a mark in this world. Have a meaningful life, whatever definition it has for you. Go towards it. The place we are living is beautiful, is a beautiful playground where everything is possible. Yet we are not here forever. Our life is a short spark in this beautiful little planet that flies with incredible speed to the endless darkness of the unknown universe. So enjoy your time here with passion. Make it interesting, make it count. Thank you, brother. Thank I appreciate you. you reading that one, man. I can't yeah. believe when I read that one, I couldn't believe that dude was 24 years old. Yeah. You know, That's and sad. the perspective, you know, like uh, necessity, right? I mean, whenever, whenever we think we have all the time in the world, sometimes we have a tendency to ignore uh, the things that are important. You know, but whenever we know that our time is limited, um, we kind of reflect, right, and choose to lose a little bit, uh, live a little bit differently. You know, and that's uh, one thing we try to talk about on this call. You know, we all we have is today. You know what I mean? It's today. Like the tomorrow is not guaranteed. You know, so what is it that we're going to do? How are we going to show up? You know, for today. So yeah. let's see. The rest of these are a lot of these are um, just pictures with some captions or some of them. These are a little bit shorter. Let me see here. Who, who, do, who wants to read this one? Let me see. Susanna, you want to read this one for me? Okay. Sure. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Mike Bernie wrote, should I do it with an accent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're like me we're stuck like chuck man but we'll just have to roll with it you know Let's see. i guess to, to us we have an act or to everyone else we have an accent yeah. right right <laughs> <laughs> i'll try to talk like a new yorker how's that <laughs> there you go there you go oh mike barney wrote i'm on the la metro coming through compton I've seen three separate people, all gang tat. I can't do this. <laughs> Let me do it right <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm on the LA Metro coming through Compton. I see three separate people, all ganged, all gang tatted up. So I'm assuming tattoos. Yep. Um, hold this woman's wheelchair steady without even her, without even, without her even asking. Faith in humanity is restored. That's pretty. Yeah, I like that one. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Denise, you want to read this next one for us? You can hang it out in your car on your beautiful sunny day. <laughs> yeah, it's roadside. Can you like bring make it, it up bigger? Okay. Is that good? Uh, I can make it even bigger. Yeah, that would be better. I got skills, <laughs> just saying, you know. A kind gesture. The other day while shopping, my son asked me to purchase him a new bike as his had recently been stolen. Sadly, I had to explain to him that we cannot currently afford to purchase a new bike. Suddenly, a large man covered in tattoos who was playing hockey in, in the aisle with another boy approached my son and handed him $350 and said, no child should ever be without a bike in summer. He then turned to me and asked, did I purchase a bike at a local business or Canadian company? I asked him his name. He replied, Jimbo. 
gave me a smile and then high five my son. I'm astonished at the kind hearted selfish action of this individual. It brings a tear to my eye. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I found, I found that news clipping. I appreciate it. Thank you for reading. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, Casper, let's hear your cool accent, bro. Read for me, brother. By the way, I'm glad you're I'm glad you're okay from falling on your face again. Hey, uh, yeah, you learn you learn stuff, right? It's beautiful. Yes, sir. It's beautiful. And I got I got like a lot of inspiration out of it, so so it's only good. Uh, what accent would you like? Uh, uh, just a... <laughs> <laughs> My friends asked me the other day, can I still do a Dutch accent? Uh, okay. Well, let me try. <laughs> no, it's really difficult. I'll just do it in my Casper, own. that's an embarrassing, really. <laughs> yeah, sorry, wow. sorry, sorry, cool. <laughs> It's awful. Okay, let me check. <laughs> Friend, I've lived across from this public park for a few years now. It's not hard to recognize when someone is living from what? It's quite hard to read this, this handwriting, though. Sorry. It's not hard to recognize when someone is living, leaving, living from their vehicle. I've been there, too. I don't understand what it means, but OK. If there's anything you need, food, water, oh, living from their vehicle. OK, I understand that. They live in the vehicle. If there's anything you need, food, water, etc., please feel free to knock on my door. I'm directly across from you at 2445. I'm a Christian. I ask nothing in return. I see you out there and I feel for you, Dan. Uh, that's nice. Yeah, man. Love that's that. That's cool, right? Yeah, some of these yeah. I found that I saw these are just pictures that people have posted because it inspired them, you know. Yeah, I love those things. It, it, it's it just putting a note, just even the note. No, even without giving water, food, or whatsoever, just getting that feeling from someone, I'm there for you. It's, it's good stuff. Love it. Well, it is, you know, and, and it's just it's acknowledgement, man. You know, like there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of homeless people, you know, and, and if, if you yeah. look at them a lot of times, most people don't even look at them, right? Like people won't even look them in the eye. Like they'll look around or ignore them because they don't want them to talk to them or, um, you know, they're, they're a person right and uh we're all a person you know what i mean and it's it could easily be uh be anybody you know most of, the time, most of the time they had like really good education and that kind of stuff but just something went wrong i mean there's Life so happens, many stories yeah. of, of of uh university professors even and scientists that just suddenly be, yeah so something happened now they live on the street so they're actually wise and, and good people but yeah I like that. Love Absolutely, this. man. Actually, got a what? little anecdote here. Got one little anecdote it. here. Now you say this. Um, when I moved to Thailand like five, six years ago, um, I was it, it was winter in, in Holland. So I was wearing my gloves, my beanie, warm jacket, and all that kind of stuff. And I was on my way to the airport, flying out to Thailand. And I saw this homeless man, and I, was, I had been chatting with him before. And I realized that I didn't need gloves and beanies and, and warm jackets in Thailand. So I just gave him all my clothes. Well, not all my clothes. I was still wearing <laughs> my, my, my G-string, but- no, you, you... <laughs> Thanks for the visual, bro. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? It was just such an amazing thing to do. And getting on a plane then, that feeling of having left behind my old city just with a, one guy a little bit warmer. It's just it's such a good feeling. It's a good feeling. And, and, and I didn't need it anyway. So there you go. Give, give. It's an important life lesson. That's it, man. Like Shabiro says, the secret of living is giving. Yeah. That's what it's about. You know, I, I, have, I absolutely agree with that, man. I love that. You know, the, the guy that one, one of the people I know that does the most service to help the most people um like six years ago I was living under a bridge you know i mean it's in, in active addiction just homeless and and everything else living under a bridge and it was somebody that uh honestly you know back then I, I probably wouldn't have talked to you know like i wouldn't have understood uh who he was as a person right because at that time i was just you know not worth a shit um you know but it's opened my eyes to see people like it's we're all people you know what i mean and it's uh we can't judge because we never I know mean, what somebody's gone that, through to get where they are. The reason why I became friends with this particular um, 
bum or whatever you call it. Uh, well, first of all, he had a nice dog. But one day I asked him, can I buy something for you, like a sandwich or something? And he said, yes, I would love to have a glass of milk or a carton of milk. And that for me was such a mind change that normally we always think, oh, he just needs money to buy drugs on the corner whatsoever. No, he just wanted to have a carton of milk because he could share that with his dog. So from then on, every time when I passed him, I bought him a carton of milk. And every time he had tears in his eyes because of the carton of milk. And everyone was just passing him, judging him being a drug addict or whatever they thought they was. He just needed a carton of milk. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, you know, speak, so speaking of that, you know, it's, I was talking to my sister about this. Um, so she was with somebody and there was a, you know, person on the side of the road asking for money. And my sister gave him a few bucks. And, you know, the person with her says, you know, he, he's just going to buy alcohol with that, you know, and she said, well, whatever, you know, I mean, I can't control what he does with it. All I can control is what I do. You know what I mean? So, uh, although I personally don't drink or do drugs anymore, um, maybe that's what that person needs out of you. Who knows? You know what I mean? But all, all we can do is, is give selflessly whatever they do with it, that that's not our responsibility. You know what I mean? But giving is giving in my, in my humble opinion. All right. Let me see. Who have I not picked on yet? Joris, you want to read this one, my brother? And Joris is gone. <laughs> He's there. He's there. No, I'm here. My kindness, can you hear? Yes. Yeah, OK. I mean, I made up that name, by the way. I think that was pretty clever. I just want to throw that out there. Perfect. Her strangers leave her money while she gently sleeps. Alex the Great, 90, wrote, I took this picture this morning. Ever been somewhere and seen something that amazed you? I'm at the East Side McDonald's, and this lady was sitting in front of me sleeping. She has everything she owns, in a small backpack. Curled up with her blanket, she sleeps, not knowing what is going on around her. While she is sleeping, everyone is getting their money out, and everyone is getting their money out and putting it on the table so it's there when she wakes up. Beautiful. Yeah, man, I thought that was cool. I thought that was cool. I have uh, seen that and participated in that, and I think that's pretty special. All right, Hilton, you know, I'm gonna pick on you, man. Can you see that? Do I need to make it bigger? Because I can do that. Yeah. Okay. No, Good. Um, this is a sign on a coffee shop, if you can see it. Oh, okay. Attention, homeless people. We support suspend coffee, which means you can pop in any time for a coffee or food that someone else has prepared for you. One token per person. See you soon. Love from Social Bugs. Social, social Bites. It's just a coffee shop. Right. Okay. But, you know, that's, right. you can go in and it's uh, like credit. You know, you buy coffee. You know, like here, I want to give this towards the towards the fund, right? Suspended coffee to help people basically buying someone else's coffee. You know, there's a there's a thing over here. Uh, a lot of people do at Starbucks, uh, which I think is really neat. You know, they go through and they pay for the person's coffee behind them in the drive-thru, you know? Just little acts of kindness, man, pay it forward. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to um, say, say a, a small gesture, what I do in the morning. Uh, Please. After I... Okay, cool. Um, I, you know, you, you know, Danny, I, I start my day with gratitude, you know, from as soon as I wake in the morning, I go through 10 things which I'm grateful for. Sometimes it doesn't always be, it might be seven or eight or, but, um, and after I go swimming, um, at the swim bath, there's a, a, a guy who's disabled and me and him have been friends and he has one of those, um, uh they they've got to let him eat they they haul him out of the swimming bath with a a, a kind of chair thing and, and then they let him in into the swimming bath as well 
Uh, but after he's half of his body is paralyzed and he, but he can walk. And um, my role, what I do when after I shower, he he sometimes is using his air dryer to dry his face. And I always take the air dryer from him and do all his back and his. He, you can see his back is, you know, one of his shoulders is disabled completely. And I dry his back with with um, with the air dryer in the mornings. Uh, and uh, me and another man who sometimes we even uh, wash his back in the shower, you know, because he's. He's, he's sometimes struggling. He, 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 but what was funny on Monday, I've been doing this for a while. On Monday, I you, you hear about the ripple effect. And I came out of the swim pass and going into the shower, and there's another woman trying his back. And I walked by and I shouted to them, That's my job. <laughs> they both. <laughs> <laughs> they both were, you know, it's like a Christmas tree lights. They both ended up laughing their head off, you know, because they know that that's something I do for him. And it's just, it's just amazing when you do stuff for people. There's a ripple effect around the world. And I think it's also within yourself as well. So that's what I want to share. I love it, brother. I appreciate it, man. That's the kind of people we have in our community. We're so blessed. All right, I obviously named this one. Okay, let me see here. Tony, you wanna to read this one for me, brother? Yeah, I can do that. Thank you, sir. And this is good shit, folks. <laughs> okay. This is a picture of a chap called Tully holding a 46 year old wheelchair bound man with severe mental handicaps. Tully picked him up so he could go on the hay ride and be with everyone else. Five minutes into the ride, the man got so excited that he peed all over himself and Tully. Tully sat there soaking in pee for the remainder of the 40 minute hayride. As soon as it was over, he changed the man's clothes before his own. If that doesn't show character, we don't know what does. Thank you, my man. Gee, don't you think that's good shit? I think that's good shit. I think that's really good shit. Um, Amen, brother. I, I have a um, seriously disabled grandchild, grandson. Um, we didn't really know whether he was going to survive or not. Um, and he's, he can't walk. So uh, sometimes when he goes out, he's now seven years old. So now he's, he's beginning to need a wheelchair because mum and dad can't carry him because um, he's getting bigger which is great. Um, and he also can't communicate, he can't speak. He has a condition called Joubert syndrome, which very, very few people know about. Um, and uh, so there's not the, the research or knowledge of it like there is with Down syndrome or cancer, which are hugely funded. But what it does, it, it, it's, uh, it's a genetic disorder and it affects the brainstem and the cerebellum, which uh, means for him, because there are different levels of this, that he has difficulty coordinating his eyes, his hands, his legs, which, which don't really work. Um, but he's, and he's, he struggles with um, sign language. So um, we say he speaks sign language with a very heavy accent. Um, but he's a hell of a character and he's a really happy chap. So um, we all feel, feel sorry for him, but we also feel immensely proud of his achievements. And 
very appreciative of, of the generosity of people who have walked for him, run for him, swum for him. Um, and uh, yeah, I always try and speak to anybody I see in a wheelchair, not the person pushing it, but specifically the person in the wheelchair. Um, because I am aware and I have heard that people in wheelchairs um, often feel below sightline, unimportant, and forgotten about. So if any, any of you guys could do that, that would be great and that would be a huge step forward for people who are disabled. And I've probably taken up far too much time. So I'm gonna shut up and mute myself. Tony, I really appreciate you sharing that, brother. If uh, if there's one thing to take away from today's call, that would be it, right? Because that Danny, would make a difference. Yes, ma'am. Can I, can I add to that real quick to Tony's of comment? Of, of course. I actually took a course in college. It was an inclusive course. And one of the one of the tasks that we had to do was get a wheelchair and, had, and then get another person. And we sat, one person would sit in the wheelchair and the other person pushed us around campus. And I was completely shocked when I was sitting in that chair, how nobody would make eye contact with me. So what Tony is saying is really, really important. If you have an opportunity to see somebody in a wheelchair, you know, just give them, at least give them a smile. And I mean, we did this, this exercise for an hour and it just really broke my heart. It does. You, look, you, at the face, you look at the guys' faces, stuff like that. Yeah. And you know, and the smiles you get really do pay you back. Mm-hmm always it's always better to be the person that smiles than the person who does not without a doubt thank you guys i appreciate it all right absolutely Tony. that's what we do here man let's probably spread some love all right this is my last little one let's see here john would you mind reading this sir you're muted brother Hello there. Um, right. Okay. I'll read this first and then I've got a comment on what uh, Tony was talking about just a moment ago. Love so it. shake it like a salt shaker. I heard my mother asking our neighbor for some salt. I asked her why she was asking them as we have salt at home. She replied, it's because they are always asking us for things. They're poor. So I thought I'd ask that something small from them so as not burden them, but at the same time, make them feel as if we need them too. That way it will be easier for them to ask us for anything they need from us. Right, so uh, um, my comment um, with regard to Tony, spent time in a wheelchair, quite a lot of time actually, um, happily i don't need it at the moment although it still sits in the porch in my, at my house and i can say categorically people ignore you if you're sat in that chair they will literally talk to the person who's pushing it and it feels terrible so i make sure i always talk to the person in the wheelchair the person who is a bit less able than ourselves. Um, I run a archery club in, here in the UK and we have a high percentage of disabled members. When I say high percentage, I mean 40% plus. And um, every so often we'll have someone come um, wanting to join the club. And when they realize just how many disabled members we already have, they choose to go somewhere else because they know how to deal with them. And I find that very sad. And that's it for me. I'm shutting up. <laughs> Thank you, John. It is sad. Unfortunately, it's not surprising. You know, people uh, avoid things that are different because things that are different make people uncomfortable. And I believe 
that's why we need to take the time to connect to people, man, because we are all the same. You know what I mean? You just got to find that similarity instead of focusing on the differences. All right. So we try to give curls five minutes before her next call because she is superwoman. And uh, thank you guys for helping me read those today. You know, I know it was a little bit different format than we usually have, but I, you know, I appreciate this much more. I love, I love hearing everybody else and hearing everybody else's experience because you know, that's what we do. Right. So our action items for this week, you know, the one that the one that we always have is to reach out and tell someone you appreciate them, preferably not by text, call them or send them a voice message or some way to just let somebody, Hey, no, I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you. I'm glad you're in my life or anything like that. And the second action item, which is simple, give a stranger a compliment. Okay. If you don't see any strangers, if you're on lockdown, somebody that you know, right. Or just, just open up your window and just yell shit out the window, but just make it positive, right. Just give somebody a compliment and see how far that goes, man. Hey, I like your shirt. Nice tie, you know, whatever it is. Great haircut, you know, what, whatever makes you feel good. All right. Those are your action items. The book of the week. I should be the book of every other week, but it just sounds better to say book of the week is this one. This is a gratitude journal. Okay. I know everybody's heard of them. This particular one is called good days start with gratitude. And it's basically like three things. This, this is actually my girlfriend. So I'm not going to open it up, but, um, change life. You know, Hilton's thing where he talks about 10 things he's grateful for. He counts it off on his fingers, whatever you want to do. But this is the book of the week. It's not something to read. This one is something to do. All right. It is 955. Thank you all for coming and hanging out with us today on our call with the cool kids. We are super, super grateful that you dedicated this time today. I hope you got something out of it. And Curls, thank you for being a rock star and for making all of this happen. My pleasure. I'm so impressed by you. You, you, you've managed to share your screen and share multiple uh, slides. Hey. Actually, actually, you know what I did? I made it Danny proof. I put it all in one word document, so all I had to do was scroll. I thought about that ahead of time. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. Cool. You're zooming as well, aren't you, Danny? <laughs> hey, bro. I'm a technological mastermind, Hilton. You know how we do this. Um. <laughs> really loved the format of this call. I thought it was a great idea to have panelists reading um, all those messages. They were all very inspiring. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was fantastic. Loved it. Really great idea. Appreciate you all. Thank you. Go have some gratitude today, right? Love you guys. I'm out. Have an awesome day. I'm going to share one should before I leave. I'm grateful Ooh. for Mario. <laughs> Mario saved my mm today because I was busy launching the call and then I had a little technical issue that distracted me. I forgot to click on recording to record the call in Zoom. And Mario sent me a message. He was like, Curls, I think you forgot to record. <laughs> so thank you so much, my love. That was amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Teamwork. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I missed the beginning of the call, but thank God, uh, not the whole, not the whole call was not recorded. Otherwise, um... the beginning was just me talking, so that that doesn't really matter. As long as you got the rest, we're good to go. <laughs> it's good to go. So thank you, Mario. Thank you very much. So guys, this is a wrap, and uh, we will be back in two weeks' time for more on the subject of gratitude, commitment, and all that jazz. Later, guys. Bye -bye. Have an awesome day. Bye, Bye. guys. Yo, Sam. <laughs> <laughs>